Hi, and here we go with our video for 25.1 Nuclear Chemistry. Now, all year we've been talking about how with elements the number of protons never changes. Well, here's the exception. And it's kind of weird to me that this is part of chemistry because there's no actual chemical reactions involved, but it is, so here we go. Now, when you look at the periodic table of elements and you get lower down on the periodic table and elements become much bigger, there's issues regarding their stability. And if they don't have enough neutrons in the nucleus to balance the number of protons, they tend to become unstable. And there's kind of a graph here. If we have the uh, number of neutrons and the number of protons here, and it's kind of a line. If it falls be way below this line, or even way above this line, it's going to be unstable. In order for stability in larger elements, the number of protons and neutrons need to be kind of near equal, usually just a little bit more neutrons than protons to help keep it stable. If not, they're going to be what's called radioactive. The first thing we're going to talk about is natural radioactivity, also known as natural decay. And this, on the reference table, table N, there's a list of selected radioisotopes. These are things that are going to underco undergo natural decay. And they've listed here the nucleide. It's the element, and specifically, it'll list certain isotope of different elements. So here where we have carbon-14, okay, that's carbon with a mass of 14, still has six protons because it's carbon, but the mass is 14. So instead of having a mass of 12, six protons, six neutrons, now it has eight neutrons, six protons. And it gives you both formats gives you here the C with the 14 up top, and over here it says carbon-14. So it gives you both names in case you forget. It also has listed the half-life, which we'll talk about in our next video. But for right now, the important thing we're going to look at is this decay mode. And we'll come back over here to table O in just a moment. So of the decay modes, there's alpha decay, right? And alpha is going to be written like alpha. And alpha decay releases an alpha particle, which is the same as a basic helium nucleus. There's going to be two protons and two neutrons released, which is going to have a mass of four and an atomic number of two, because there's two protons. And you don't even have to memorize it, because it's right here in table O. There's also beta decay which we can see right here, has a mass of zero and a charge of negative one, and a little e. Beta decay is the equivalent of an electron. There's positron decay, where we can see here it's written just like the electron, but it has a charge of plus one. Positron is kind of like a positive electron. So it's got the size of an electron, but a positive charge, like a proton. Gamma is just radiation, okay? It's gonna have no mass, but it has a lot of energy. It can actually do a lot of damage, okay? And it's important to pay attention to these charges of the particles, all right? Alpha particle is gonna be two plus, beta particle minus one, gamma radiation, none. Neutron, no charge, but it has a mass of one, just like a neutron. Proton, positive charge, and has a mass of one, because it is a proton. And the positron, which was the positive electron. Let's take a look. Okay, so natural decay starts with a parent nucleide that ejects a decay particle to form a daughter nucleide, which is more stable than the parent was. So like here, carbon-14 is going to undergo beta decay. It's going to lose two protons and two electrons, and it's going to form something new. So first we're going to take a look at alpha decay. So an alpha particle, right, has mass of four protons and, I'm sorry, four, a mass of four 
and two protons, so it's going to have two protons and two neutrons. Okay, so let's look here. Uranium, 238. Oh, uranium, 238. All right, and uranium has a atomic number of 92. All right, so for alpha decay, the nucleus ejects two protons and two neutrons. The atomic mass decreases by four. The atomic number decreases by two. And you need to be able to write this out. So if uranium, 238, 92, it's going to make something new. So for right now, we'll just put an X. The atomic number decreases by two. So it goes from 92 to 90. And the atomic mass decreases by four. So it's going to be 234. So if we want to look up what that's going to become, we go right to our periodic table on the reference table. We find the element that has an atomic number of 90. And we can see that that is thallium. So it becomes, so the X is going to be TH based on the fact that that's the element with the atomic number of 90. So 90, 2, 34. So when uranium decays, it's going to become thallium, 234. And we write it, we have to write that the uh, alpha particle was lost. So we can write an alpha particle, 4, 2. Or we can write this like so, HE, because it's a helium nucleus, 4, 2. And that's alpha decay. You'll frequently get problems on the regions where it'll leave any one of these blank, okay, or a mass number. All right, it'll just have you figure out what the X is. But when we look on the reference table and see the type of decay, it becomes very easy to fill out. We'll practice a bunch of these in class. All right, so now let's take a look at beta decay. All right, so as we said earlier, Beta decay is involved in giving off a beta particle, an electron. Okay. So the way I like to think of it is, right, if you think of a, a neutron, right, and inside, since a neutron is neutral, if you think of it as having both a positive charge and a negative charge, if it gives off the negative charge, an electron, okay, you're going to be left with a positive proton, and when it gives off the negative charge, an electron. So I like to think of a neutron, which has zero charge, as being a combination of a proton and an electron. So here, right, the neutron decays into proton and electron. The electron is ejected from the nucleus as a beta particle. The atomic mass remains the same, because an electron has basically no mass. But the atomic number increases by one. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. Let's say we have carbon-14. Okay, so we have carbon-14. And with beta emission, the mass stays the same, so it's going to be, mass will still be 14, but now the atomic number increases by 1. It's going to become a larger element, so 14, 7. We look on the periodic table to see what has an atomic number of 7. We can see that it is nitrogen. So carbon-14 decays into a very stable form of nitrogen, right, plus a beta particle. Next one we're going to talk about is positron decay. All right, so a positron is like a positive electron. Now in here, a proton, right, so the proton is positive. If a proton loses its positive charge but no mass, it loses its charge, gives off a positron, and what's left is like a neutron. So a proton is converted into a neutron and a positron. The positron is ejected by the nucleus. The mass remains the same, but the atomic number decreases by one. So here, let's say, so let's look at iron 33. I'm sorry, yeah, iron 53. So iron 53, if it's going to give off a positron, 
the atomic number decreases by 1, we'll end up with 53, 25. And when we look on the reference table for 25, we're going to see that it's manganese. M, N. And then that's positron decay. All right, so finally, gamma decay. It's not going to really turn into something because it's usually going to happen in conjunction with something else. All right, since the nucleus has energy levels just like electrons, but these involve a lot more energy. And as the nucleus, as something decays and the nucleus becomes more disabled, more stable, a gamma ray can frequently be released. It's high energy, has no mass, has no charge, it can penetrate into human tissue or whatever and actually cause an awful lot of damage. So gamma ray is really, really bad. Okay, but it's a photon of high energy or light, doesn't have any mass or charge, and the atomic mass and the atomic number don't change when we're dealing with gamma decay or gamma radiation during decay is really a better way of saying it. All right, so up next is artificial transmutation. So, so far what we've been talking about is natural transmutation, things that occur naturally. But we can also cause nuclear changes artificially. Okay? Generally what will happen is, and you'll be asked questions on the regions, is something natural or artificial? So normally, if it's natural, it was one thing becoming, you know, you have your mode of decay, whether it's beta or alpha, plus usually a smaller element, okay, but sometimes larger. In artificial transmutation, you'll have your nuclide, which is your element that we're talking about, and some sort of bullet. It's going to get bombarded with something, all right, so bombarded is a key word. And it's going to make a new element and give off some pieces. So when we're looking at these, the masses and atomic numbers must add up to be the same on both sides of the arrow. For example, here, all right, we have uh, calcium 40. Okay, it's going to be bombarded with something, and it's going to give off potassium 40 and a proton. So we want to fix this here, because that can't be. Oh, wait, no. Yep, because. All right, so what we do is we add this up. 40 plus 1 is 41. 19 plus 1 is 20. So whatever, then we're going to subtract from this side. So we're going to have 41 minus 40 is 1. 20 minus 20 is 0. So we have to think what has a mass of 1 and a charge of 0 or no protons. So it has a mass of 1 and no charge, that would be a neutron. So if we bombard calcium 40 with a neutron, it's going to give us potassium 40 and a proton. Now let's look at another one. We have molybdenum, blah, molybdenum 96 plus uh, a deuterium, which is a hydrogen it's going to have a mass of 2 and 1 proton. So we're going to add these up, and we get 98, 43. We're going to subtract what we see here, which is a mass of 1, atomic number of 0. So we're going to have 97, 43. And now we just need to look up the element 43. And technium T C. Okay, so we whatever the atomic masses and numbers on the left need to equal the ones on the right in any problems that we do. So basically nuclear fission, which is involving breaking apart larger elements into smaller ones, okay, is usually gonna cause a chain reaction. An example of it, the most common thing used is uranium. And when uranium is initially bombarded with a neutron, it's going to break down into krypton, barium, and more neutrons and a lot of energy. 
and these more neutrons end up causing a chain reaction because we put only one in and three are given off and those neutrons are going to go break apart more uranium which will break apart more uranium and break apart more uranium still okay and it's a chain reaction and if it can go out of control then that's where you end up with a nuclear explosion and so these are reabsorbed by other nuclei, nuclei to continue fission as a chain reaction and through that the whole process a tiny bit of mass is lost okay I know even saying that matter can't be created or destroyed but it can be converted into energy and a tiny bit of mass is converted into a huge amount of energy, which is why nuclear weapons are so very powerful. All right, the other type of nuclear reaction we're going to talk about is nuclear fusion. So here we have two small things, okay, smashing together at high temperature and pressure to form a larger nucleus. Where it was fission, we were breaking down, right, fission, break down something big, to make some smaller things. In fusion, we're taking two small things, putting them together to make something bigger. All right, that's how to recognize them on the regions. So same thing, a small bit of mass is destroyed and converted into a huge amount of energy. and ends up being even more than fission. And here's our basic formula for fusion. Two hydrogens, well actually deuteriums, two deuteriums crash together fuse together, hence fusion, to make helium and give off an awful lot of energy. All right, that brings us to the end of 25.1. As always, if you need to go back and rewatch any parts, I'll see you in school.